Hi guys, my name is Dan. This is the third video in a series of videos going over operator. Last couple of videos were on the filter. This one is going to be on the LFO. And I'm just going to simply real quick demonstrate the different aspects in the LFO. So there's an envelope which we'll get to. In the LFO bracket itself, there's different cycle forms you can choose from a sine wave all the way to a noise. And then you can select low or high for the cycles to be, the cycle rate to be real fast or on the slower end, like an LFO would normally be, and or synced, in which case once selected you have, your rate is divided into subdivisions of your beats per minute of your mix. Anyways, to start things off, um, actually there's an interesting sound I made real quick. Actually, if you do the sample on hold, it's even cooler. And this this is kind of a unique feature of the sample and hold. It's a, it's, but uh, we'll get to that uh, because it's a lot like a square wave. But the uh, the amount that it affects what you have it routed to is changes per sample. Uh, each it's randomized so with the sample and hold. And the things in this case you can route it to are each one of the os of the four oscillators, or you can route it to the filter as well. You can also route it to this list of things in operator as a second deal to influence with the LFO. So with the type of uh, with the cycle forms, we'll use a sine wave and then you're going to tell that cycle how fast to be, right? And then you're going to tell whatever you have it routed to, how much it's affected. So you click this button here to highlight it. That means that the LFO is routed to that. Well, and so I thought maybe the filter would be the most appropriate thing to route it to at this point. And your, what it does is the amount that the LFO is set at affects the frequency cutoff point of the filter. And Whoa, let's, let's reduce the release time here. So I can continue to talk. All right. So the, the amount as I adjusted it down reduces the swing of the frequency cutoff of the filter. And then the more that I in increase the amount, the more that it throws the frequency up and uh, the filter cutoff frequency up and down the spectrum. And the envelope in here also affects how much the amount it affects what it's routed to as per the ADSR settings that you have it set at. So this is with everything with it affecting the amount at 100% all the time, uh, and which case the envelope's not really going to do much. So that's the sine wave cycles. Then there's square waves, which those are mostly high-low um, frequency or amount swings instead of uh, you know, gradual up and down like the sine wave, it's suddenly high, suddenly low, suddenly high, based on the rate and influenced by the amount that you set. So you notice as I increase the amount, this, the filter cutoff went from higher to lower to even higher to even lower. 
and pretty much continues on that type of scaling. So triangle wave, it's a lot like a sine wave, but it's more up and it, it sounds pretty similar, but it's, it's just a little bit different. Um, if you ever look at a sine wave, it's more curved. The triangle is going to be more, is lines are going to be straight. So the peaks are not going to last as long and the troughs aren't going to last as long. And then saw up, which is a ramp. And then saw down, which is a real saw wave. Um, and sample and hold, it's a lot like the square wave I demonstrated, except for the, the amounts are randomized as to how much the LFO affects the frequency cutoff. But by increasing the amount, you get larger differences in the highs and lows. So notice you heard higher pitch sounds when I increased the amount and lower pitch sounds. All right. If you, uh, so here you can select how fast you can make it really fast by selecting the H for high. Basically gets to where it's um, the, the gaps are imperceivable and um, you have to use those higher frequencies in a different application. I'm not going to go over that here. Just this is more straightforward and simple kind of stuff. So that's the LFO for that. Um, and so you got your ADSR, so you can let's start your amount low, make it take a second and a half before it reaches the decay, and then it takes a few seconds or wherever you want to set it to get down to the sustain. Actually, let's just do this real quick, make the rate zero. And then when I release the key, it follows back up and starts to increase the amount that the LFO in influences the filter cutoff. So that's just more of a simple linear way to show how it's dem to demonstrate how it functions. And you can throw the rate up a little bit and it will do other things. And it's, so it's just a, an effect over time kind of deal. All right, back to the sine wave. And then I don't have the release set for very long, so you can't hardly hear very much of what the release time does. All right. Also with this, there is a way to have the envelope loop itself, loop its effect on the LFO. Of course, there's no effect of looping, then there's looping. And so you got the time of the loop and you also include the time of the attack and decay in that whole looping cycle. So, just from beginning to end, uh, goes up the attack to the decay. Once the decay is finished with its time parameter, then it waits the time that you set it here, and then it starts again on the attack. And then, of course, you can use beat, and then you are, at this point, selecting beat subdivisions of your mix. <laughs> All 
Let me try to get this to behave differently. So those are just different. Again, those are looping cycles on your envelope and how you have that set to affect your LFO and the amount that you have your LFO at set to affect your filter cutoff with also the rate of the LFO cycles within the envelope. I think it's kind of heady, a little bit complicated, sort of, um, but I'm doing my best here. And then there's sync, which is which it loops those cycles in, and it begins the envelope starting point, the attack, when you start playing the music in your mix. So that way it's every time you start your mix, it re-triggers and starts everything over. So it's more in line. Then there's trigger, and that is a, it's a lot like looping, except for it also, even with the note still being played, it holds, it, it goes through the release parameters as well. So it goes through the whole envelope, even though the note's still held. But instead of looping, it just, it's basically, uh, it's like the none option, except for the none option, um, envelope follows into the release once you release the key. When you have it in the trigger option, it goes through the release parameters even though the note's still held. So that's this kind of thing that it does and that's the way the trigger works. The, and then there's the time velocity where you can, on the positive, you can set it to a positive 100 or negative, whatever. And basically on the positive, you hit the key hard, it speeds up time that the parameters um, cycle through the, the LFO envelope. Let's put it on a loop and hit the key softly. And then we'll, and then I'll hit it hard and then it'll go faster. And actually at that point it was so fast that it was actually the cycles of the LFO were actually skipping aspects of the volume of the envelope of the LFO. So you got to you got to work with some of the timing to get things to be just right. And, uh, and then the rate key um, basically works with the pitch and how fast the volume or the LFO envelope works and then the amount that the LFO is affected by how hard you hit the key. So anyways, I hope that kind of covers everything with the LFO, answers questions and whatnot. And I uh, hope you guys like these videos. Uh, please throw me a like uh, or a comment and uh, feel free to subscribe. And uh, I appreciate all your all's time and support. Thanks so much.